We at Tacoma Art Museum are proud to present Art Aids America and share this with our community. And we invite you into the conversation to remember, to reflect, or to learn anew about this important moment in American art and history. The AIDS crisis began in 1981 with the rapid presentation of unknown illnesses and deaths. While much was being done to identify the disease, there was not an organized government response. In fact, then-President Reagan did not give his first speech about AIDS until 1987, when over 40,000 Americans had died from it. By 1995, AIDS was the leading cause of death among Americans aged 25 to 44. HIV AIDS has no cure, and untreated, it leads to death. Today, for those who can afford it, antiretroviral therapy allows HIV positive individuals to have a near normal life expectancy. Still, in the US, every 10 minutes, another person becomes infected with HIV. HIV AIDS has had tremendous impact on society as a cause of illness, death, discrimination, and activism. It has created schisms in politics and religion, affected health care, the economy, and created a climate of fear, grief, and anger that forever changed art and culture. HIV AIDS has become part of American artistic identity. We organized Art AIDS America because we want people to think about the ongoing impact of HIV on American art and society. Artists are the real architects of change because they point out to us things we need to pay attention to. AIDS is the crucible of American culture, but we rarely acknowledge its genealogy. This exhibition is an attempt to connect who we are now with what we were then. So when AIDS first appeared in an American context, it reanimated and gave new life to all sorts of very old homophobias that were beginning to fade. Artists saw their work as a way to change the conversation, to change how we understood the AIDS crisis more broadly and refocus on the people who were sick and who were dying. The art of the time had to respond to that kind of incredibly fraught and dangerous context. The whole arts community was decimated by this. And I think it's it's really difficult for people to uh, understand and know what was uh, going on at the time. It just became uh, a nightmare. One by one, I watched my core group of friends be picked off uh, by this mysterious illness. We're talking about young men 18 to 24 in the prime of their life who all of a sudden find they have a particular disease and within 15 months they're dead. We need to have the conversation shift from statistics and the other to people and their souls and their lives. We picked deliberately the size of three feet by six feet for a quilt panel because it approximates the size of a human grave. And our goal was to go to Washington to lay out our dead on the National Mall on our nation's civic stage and say, these lives matter. The artist community was particularly impacted. Uh, they were essentially the front lines. Activists like Grand Fury set an example of how art could be used to address something that was urgent, something that demanded collaborative effort, and something that needed social change. In the early 1980s, artists had to define strategies based upon social and political necessity. There were also these extraordinarily beautiful gestures that allowed the idea of AIDS to infiltrate into the museums and gallery system. These artists knew that art about AIDS would never get into the museums in the cultural context of that moment. 
I would love to think that people would stop in front of the picture and wonder immediately, well, why is this pretty flower picture in the show? And then for them to see that all of the little sweet whims are, are us. They're individuals in our society and they're standing there and they're being cut down based upon their condition, their HIV status. I think people should look at this art and understand that the artists are using their craft, their, their studio practice to affect change. And to understand that, we need to also understand their personal biography and their experiences with HIV AIDS. You don't ever hear about it in the stories. It's the same group of people that are being talked about. I want to tell my story. I want to tell a story of a young person, a young woman of color. I want to tell a story about a person born with HIV, which is never in the narrative. The art became a reflection of what was happening, not just to me, but to others who were being, you know, taken out of museums, their work, uh, because of the, the depth of the issue of HIV AIDS. And this carried it even deeper into an emotional experience of what was happening in the times. The level of stigma, the, the, the hiding, the uh, wanting to you know, not talk about HIV and AIDS was so tremendous. And I was trying to bring a conversation through my art that looked at it in a different way. The issues of stigma, the issues of shame and silence, the issues that really um, permeated addressing the disease effectively in those early years continue to thwart efforts to address the disease today. Art AIDS America is about a 30-year time frame and one of the important things to remember is that AIDS is not in the past and that it continues to affect 1.2 million Americans and we wanted to show how artists um, had adjusted their work over the course of this period. The artwork that has come out of the AIDS epidemic has just completely changed the way that we view art, the way that we create art, because the art was about survival, activism, and it was a call to attention on an issue that was not gaining attention. An exhibition like this demonstrates that art can be an agent of change. If I can just even have one person see it and touch, be touched by it and realize the bigger implications, then I've done my job as an artist. And what do you do when you're silenced? You just gotta let it out. You gotta go crazy, you gotta go big, or you gotta go home.